Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. We are here. We are live. Thank you guys for being here. Um, can everyone hear us? We're going to. I can hear you. All right. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> I've frozen again, haven't I? Uh, now, now I see it says live. Oh, good, good. All right, all right. Nice. Because uh, my, my computer has never, ever done this before. And it's just deciding to uh, to freeze on me every now and then. So, guys, please please bear with me. All right, guys, welcome, welcome. We're going to wait to get a couple more people in here. We have five, a record of five. We're going live with five. But we want more. We want more. Um, all right, everybody, welcome. This, this, this will be up on, on YouTube afterwards anyway for everyone to view. So, hello, everybody. Uh, please welcome the wonderful fabulous and very very talented stacy walker <laughs> hi i'm so happy you know, stacy is uh one of michael's lovely wonderful dancers and uh uh associate choreographer and this is it you guys have seen her in ghosts but hidden behind a beautiful fantastic mask uh the history tour um so stacy thank you so so much for being here and for joining me i appreciate it massively so happy to see you I'm so happy to see you, and I can't believe this is the first time that we've gotten to talk. So yes, this will be fun. This will be fun. Right, it's going to be great fun. Fabulous start for a fabulous weekend. Um, yeah, Stacy and I first uh, spoke on the phone a few days ago. Um, been chatting on and off on uh, on online, but um, yeah, but this is the first time we've we've kind of seen each other and met each other, so to speak, digitally, um, as a lot of people do these days. So it's very exciting. Uh, we have a whole bunch of great stuff to cover. So you guys, um, please bring in your questions and uh, everything you'd like to ask uh, Stacy or myself. Um, we're, uh, oh, Stacy, just to say, if mm. I lose my focus, it's because I'm trying to multitask, which I'm not great at, apart from when I, apart from when I cook. Uh, I I'll just know, you're reading comments. your comments. I get it. You're busy. Right, right, right. Don't you worry about a thing. I don't have that natural female talent, you know, of, of the multitasking. So. <laughs> 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 um, all right, super. So you guys, as as uh, as you all know, Stacey, uh, you guys will recognize her from This Is It and the History Tour. Actually, let's start with the History Tour um, because uh, from starting – was it May 31st and the second leg of the tour in 97? Uh, you were Michael's The Way You Make Me Feel, girl, weren't you? Gosh, I'm like, was that the date? I don't know, but I have this book from the history. Yes. Ooh. Um, yeah, this is, wow. uh, this is our, like, you know, they would give us these books of where every hotel we stayed. Sorry, oh I'm my going, God, how Every cool. hotel we stayed at, you know, a map of the city, all that kind of wow. stuff. It was really, yeah, it was really cool. But um, you probably know better than I do when it started. So let's say it was <laughs> May 31st. May 31st in Bremen. It, that's right. I was going to say, I know it was in Germany. That was my right. first show. And uh, oh my gosh, I remember standing in the wings and all of a sudden, you know, the opening video started playing and the band started playing and the crowd started roaring and I started crying. Really? <laughs> wow. I mean, it was Phenomenal. It was like, what am I doing here? You know, it was wow. so crazy. Cause up until that point, it was just like, oh yeah, rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. Okay. We're going to, you know, you know, as a dancer, you get used to working like that. Um, and, but then, you know, when it really came to be, it was, whoa, just, it took your breath away. The sound of those fans was incredible. Like a roar, uh, an, oh, an overwhelming roar. It. Yeah. You just felt it. it and so you were just cool. feeling like the little girl from Atlanta suddenly exactly. was here on tour with Michael and the history tour in front of like 85,000 people. Yeah, it wasn't that, like I wasn't afraid of dancing in front of all those people. It was more like, how did I get here? How did that happen to me? This is what am I doing? You know, no, it was. No. I still actually feel that way looking back on everything. I wow, you know, it's like a dream almost. Yeah, I'll see pictures of myself with Michael, and I'll just yes. I'll think, oh, that's so cool. That girl got to do that, but I can't even realize really it was me. <laughs> Yeah, you're trying to register the reality of it, and it's just too too surreal, too phenomenal. That's right. It's incredible. There's a whole bunch of stuff 
I want to go into um, uh, like on the on uh, on the tail end of what we're talking about. But I'm going to try and catch some of these questions before I um, disappear. So I've just before they disappear. Sorry. So I've yes. just seen one here, which is real nice from Carrie. What was your favorite dance to choreograph or to dance to even? Um, yeah, because I didn't choreograph a lot of numbers because. Honestly, the only time I worked in the choreography department was on This Is It. Right. And this as is you it. know, a lot of those numbers were we recreated. Right. We already choreographed, you know, years back. So the only new one I ever worked on was was Drill. That was like. Oh, wow. Movie. You did. I mean, I didn't do that myself. Um, Travis, Travis and Michael, Tony Testa. Right. Uh, you know, even even I think the guys, it was just a big joint effort. But that was the only new piece of choreography that I was ever involved in. Right. Um, but of course, restaging and, and recreating all the yeah. iconic pieces, you know, that was always a fun, fun thing. My favorite one, uh, my favorite one to dance, I would say it's it would be a cross between Smooth Criminal and The Way You Make Me Feel. The right. Way Neil wasn't even really dancing. It's it just a whole improv. Yeah. Acting and all that. So I loved that because that was our. I'm going to hands on your waist. <laughs> yes. That was, that was our number. So I loved that. Um, but Smooth Criminal was always really, really fun to me. I loved that as, you know, the short film. I loved that from the beginning. And then to get to do that live too was pretty incredible. So. Oh, yeah. We just got someone right here saying. Uh, how was your first The Way You Make Me Feel performance with Michael from Victor? You know, I remember the first time I did it in rehearsal with him. I was sick to my stomach. I was so nervous. I was just so nervous, you know. Um, wow. But it but it was great. Once, you know, once you're on stage, the nerves aren't there anymore for me. Like, I'm a different person on stage. It was scarier for me in rehearsal than it was yeah. in once I was on stage, I was like, I love it. I love you were in it. the zone. You were in the zone. Yeah. In rehearsal mm -hmm. for the first time was much scarier. But but you know, he didn't make you feel scared. That was just me feeling right. Nervous. Where did you guys rehearse when you when you when you did the first rehearsals? Well, because since I did the second leg of the history tour, we rehearsed just the dancers rehearsed in LA at a studio called Alley Cat in Hollywood. And, but we didn't really rehearse with Michael until we got to, um, you know, we did it at, at Disney in France. Oh, really? Yeah, we went there and that's where our, maybe our last two weeks of rehearsal were. Because Michael we was staying there in the hotel, wasn't he? I, I don't, I can't remember why we went there to rehearse, but um, that was the first time I rehearsed with him. For wow. the in, in one of their theaters, just closed off somewhere. No, they have like rehearsal studios and everything, I guess, for their shows. Oh. So we used their rehearsal studios uh, in France, Disney. Oh, incredible. Well, uh -huh. that's something I never, ever knew that Disneyland Paris, right? Disneyland? Yes, yes. Was used for the history tour rehearsals for the second leg. Yeah, just, just like incredible. the last two weeks. So, you know, the dancer, Michael had already rehearsed, you know, he had already done the first leg. So it wasn't like he needed to be in rehearsals with us every day. But, right. Um, so we did our own rehearsals, you know, back in LA. And once we knew it, that's when we all moved to um, Paris and then rehearsed with him and put it up in Germany. And and um, was Michael, like there was a stand-in for Michael, like was it a uh, attacker like Bruno? That you, would you just stand um, in? We didn't really ever do stand-ins for him. Oh, as really? Well. No, as far as I remember. I mean, Taco was always there. I love him so much. Yeah. We just interviewed him for one of our projects. He's oh, amazing. Amazing. Yeah. How's he doing? He's doing great. His hair is all long and really. Gray and oh, yeah. It's, it's really. Isn't he like part Native American? He has like a Native American ethnicity, doesn't he? You know, I don't know. Could be wrong. His, I could be wrong. I thought. I don't know his full ethnicity. As I don't know, you know, if we all are. A lot of us are mixes of lots of different things. Right, right, right. I'm not sure. Um, that's no. a question we'll have to ask him one day. Wasn't he in um, uh, Breakdance? Oh, yeah. Break in, like those, um, the movies. Break in. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, Electric Boogaloo was Electric that Boogaloo, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know his full um, 
you know, he's he did a lot. I mean, he's yeah, really he was known as like Pop and Taco, I think. Pop and Taco, that's right. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Mm -hmm. We've got a question uh, here from Red Jackson. Uh, do you have a favorite memory from the history tour? Uh, a favorite? Oh, hey, Red. I know Red. Um, <laughs> um, well, I and I see another question, so I'm going to tie the two together because the, right. the other question by L says uh any funny bloopers from the history tour so this oh, that's a good one i'm going to tie those two together okay because it's a favorite memory and it's sort of a blooper um <laughs> one night we were doing the way you make me feel and i was just into it you know when you're i'm just feeling extra sassy that night and he had his arms around me and i reached back and i grabbed his butt <laughs> and squeezed his butt <laughs> Yes. And, and then, you know, my time was over and I went off stage and, and I was, and I was remember, intentional or was that an accidental grab? Well, it, we didn't usually do that, but I was just <laughs> at that moment. So I did it. And so I remember going off stage going, Lavelle, oh my God, I just grabbed Michael's butt. And because I was like, am I in trouble? Like, did I, should I have done that? You know what I mean? And Lavelle was like, don't worry about it. I'm sure he loved it. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. Hey. But, but that was fun. So that's my favorite blooper and memory. One of, one of my favorite blooper and memory. Yeah. Do you remember, uh, it's probably a stupid question, but do you remember which show that was from specifically? No. Uh, which city? Yeah. I was going to say, I could YouTube that and, and go looking for it. I don't. I have I have no idea actually. But I would yeah. say I, I think it was more towards the beginning of the second. Right. But anyway, okay. yes. How amazing to um, be part of that, you lucky girl. I am one lucky girl. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Uh, we have we have something right here. What was Michael like as a boss? Oh gosh, he was I would barely call him a boss just because that wasn't he really wasn't a bossy person, you know what I mean? He, right, right. He was other people sort of, I mean, well, that sounds weird. I mean, he definitely was the boss. He, de he was involved in everything. He had input in everything. So that's not at all what I mean. But, you know, as far as personality, I would say he's not, he never came across as like, I'm the boss and you better. Right. He wasn't like that. He was he's too he was, humble. Yeah. So warm, quiet, shy very appreciative of everyone's talents, you know, and time. Um, mm. I would say he was appreciative as a boss. That's yeah, he was aware that it was all a, a collective collaborative effort yes. together and that you, you you guys were helping him to fulfill and bring his vision to life. Yes. I mean, he was a hard worker and very serious, but so was everybody. Because if you're working with Michael Jackson, listen, you're going to bring your A game, right? Everybody, right. Everybody did. So no, it was but it was always just a very nice atmosphere to be in. It never felt um I know I said I was really nervous in rehearsal, but that was just because that was my first time. But on a whole, it never felt um it wasn't a nervous feeling you had being in that camp. It was just yeah. super fun, you know, it was a super fun time. Wow, 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 yeah. phenomenal. Um we have one. What was it like working with Michael on This Is It? Was it was it different at all? Was it just like stepping back into the game again? Did it feel new? Did it did it feel slightly different? A little more exciting? It felt, it felt new to me and exciting to me because uh, for the first time, well, Travis and I were not dancing. We were only on the other side of it, on the choreography right. side. So right. that was very different for for us because before. I mean, Travis had choreographed before. I had just danced before. I was just a dancer before. So now being on the other side of it was really fun and thrilling. It was a new experience, different than the others, you know. Um, but I, well, I was going to say, I, I think I might have even enjoyed it more. But I don't think that's true. I, I think I definitely enjoyed dancing with him at, right, as well. on stage. But I feel very lucky that I got to do both sides. You know, I got right. to do, and then I got to help create, and that was thrilling, honestly. Exactly, and 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 um, we were just before we came live, we were just talking between us, saying about um, what had become of that, and then uh, your involvement had obviously then moved to um, the memorial, right? And 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 how you were 
preoccupied with focusing on getting things right with that, which you said was probably a good thing because it took you away from the grief for that short period of time. You were just focused and fixed on on on, on what you guys had to do. But what uh, a heartbreaking, tragic, completely unexpected um, turn of events for you. You know, you guys were expecting a week and a half, two weeks, okay, we're going to London. Well, I guess you guys were headed for London, I guess, about a week from then, because the shows mm-hmm. were about two weeks off, right, I think? Yeah, that um, makes sense. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so you were pretty much days away. And then, of course, everything came to a crashing, tragic, heartbreaking halt. Uh, and then suddenly you were delivered the news, and then shortly after that it was, okay, right, I need your game on because this is what we're going to do we need to do the the memorial and this is what i'd like you guys to do and how to take part in it so how was that experience for you that transition mentally emotionally yeah. well i'm going to go back to um i guess it was the night before it must have been the 24th oddly enough i had called my mom from the from staples center and said hey you know let i got two tickets to opening night so book your flight we you booked your flight and everything. So that was just on the 24th. So we were really ready to go. You know, my mom was coming and, um, and we were all really excited because we had just done like our first real run through with Michael got through the show, you know, everybody was feeling really good. So we really yeah. left on a high note. And so then the next day when, you know, Oh, okay. This is actually a a uh, devastating but kind of beautiful story. You know, Travis and I have this thing where we have little Michaelisms, we call it, like he'll appear, you know, like if you're, sometimes if you have a relative pass away and you see a bird or a hummingbird or a something, you know, it's a, sign. it's a sign from them. We have that with Michael a lot. Well, so here's my sweet but devastating little story about the 25th. And sometimes I get emotional, so just don't worry. It just happens, you're allowed to cry if you want. Yeah, but, go for it. Um, so I was at the Staples Center with Kenny and we were rehearsing Michael's disappearing act. Isn't that crazy? Wow. During that, Travis called me and he was like, what's happening? What's going on? And I'm like, oh, we're, we're, we're on stage with the dancers. We're just rehearsing, you know, whatever, whatever. He's like, no, 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 something's happening. I, I'm driving to Michael's house right now, but on the radio it's saying, you know, they picked him up in an ambulance or something like that. And I was like, oh, I, I don't know. He's like, put Kenny on the phone. So I put Kenny on the phone and they talked and we hadn't really heard anything yet because we don't, we're not in front of a TV, we're rehearsing, you know. So everyone's phones start beeping, text messages, you know, so everyone starts to know something's happening. But I honestly, I think like you, Danny, didn't really, I didn't really think anything was up. I thought, Publicity this is all publicity, just whatever. Who cares? Right. You know, I really did not think anything was happening. So, but anyway, at a certain point, I think um, Kenny and I said, you know, because I Travis then was on his way to the Staples Center. I don't think he was quite there yet, but we, at some point, we let the dancers and the band and everybody just go back to their dressing rooms until we kind of figured out what was happening. And then I'll try to speed this up, but. Um, all I remember is Travis was there, me, Travis, Alif, who was the associate producer, and Kenny, the four of us, were standing in the middle of the Staples Center on the floor, and no one else was there, literally everyone else was back in the dressing room, and Michael's phone rang, and he just fell in his chair and told us that Michael had died. So it was really stunning and unbelievable God. and all, all i remember is like kenny fell in his chair a leaf started crying travis got on his computer you know because that was too much for him to hear i think and i just ran to the dancers and told them and this this was in the staples center this was in the staples center because we were in the middle of a rehearsal yeah gosh so, and then it was interesting because none of us really knew what to do so we all stayed there all day. We stayed there like we even ate dinner there. 
because this, I don't remember the time or anything because it's all such a, a haze, but um, we stayed there all day because we didn't really know what to do, you know, but as we were there, I would say within one hour, they started tearing the stage down. My goodness, really? It was like, so, wow. so you know, weirdly, it was, it was the death of a superstar that we were mourning, but it was also the death of our family and our right. show and our jobs and our project and our team and like everything just, not only did we lose Michael, which obviously was the most important and horrific, but you know, everybody's life changed immediately. Like those dancers, right. had, they had no place to live. Like they had, you know, given up their apartments. They were moving to London. You know, wow. um, you know, like this was um, it was really, really difficult time for so so many people, which is why, yes, you're right, the memorial. And I don't remember how fast that came about. I know, I know he obviously died on the 25th. I know on the 26th, Kenny was kind enough to have a dinner for everybody, the whole team. And we went to a, um, a Chinese dinner here in right, actually by where I live right now in Sherman Oaks. And we all had dinner together that next night. And then there must have been a day or two that went by. And then we started planning the memorial which I think was a really great gift for us because it gave us purpose and something to do. Otherwise, I think so many of us would have just been lost, you know. Right. It gave you something to focus on and strive toward. Yes. And so that kept us busy. I think we had about two weeks to plan it. Again, I don't even remember the date of the memorial now. I'm. It's all a blur to me, but... Um, yeah, and then we were all a part of that memorial, which I know you were at. Right, right, it was right. A really, yeah, special day, wasn't My it? My goodness, it was. I mean, it's you know, I'm I'm sitting here, you know, listening to your story, your experience, your perspective, and it's so interesting to hear it from your perspective, being on the other side while directly involved in the project that the whole world was waiting for, and you know it's interesting to hear about these things like you're saying the dancers they had nowhere to go they had already moved to london and arranged places over there and you know you don't think of those little things right and as you say for the crew losing michael of course was the most heartbreaking unexpected tragic thing ever but then at the same time you've got these people who are like oh you just kind of hit a brick wall. And as you say, there's this, this vision, this project, this masterpiece, this phenomenal, innovative, creative creation that has suddenly come to an abrupt finish. Right. And all those hours, all that time, all that energy, it's just kind of poof in the air, you know. But, but that's that's what I learned. Sorry, Danny, I have to I have to pipe in here because it's a good lesson for everybody. And you get it when you get it. So you may not get it, but that is what taught me to enjoy the journey and let go of the outcome because you know what, Stacy, you're not in charge. And I really thought I was in charge. I really did. Like, I mean, yeah. the show was done. Everything was staged, the rehearsal, like it was, my mom had her ticket to go to London. Like, no, 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 I'm ready. Like what? He died, what? No. You know, I was mad too, because no, I, I did everything right. What do you mean? You know, yeah. so, and yeah. that being silly. I mean, I don't take me literally, I'm being kind of silly because you know, but in your mind, I'm thinking, no, I've done everything on the checklist. So why isn't this right. happening? You know, right, right. really taught me, Stacy. Just you got to let it go. You're not in charge of this life. You do your best, yeah. hard, but just enjoy every day. And Embrace and absorb every step of the journey. Yes, yeah. And it really is. When I look back, that journey of all those rehearsals, that would have always been the most special part of that journey. You know, yeah. once and it, show, it's fun and everything, but no, that journey was what was so special with those people absolutely and 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 it's 
it's wonderful that it was captured uh, on video for the world to see, to get just a glimpse inside of what everyone had prepared, what Michael was ready to show the world or getting ready to show the world. And I know there are many fans that were that were against the release of the This Is It behind the scenes documentary movie. But in my personal opinion, though I think, yes, Michael is a perfectionist, probably wouldn't have, you know, like this angle or he wouldn't have liked you know that rehearsal because he was just marking it and that and of course we're aware of that he was marking he was pacing as kenny has said in many interviews you know he 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 wasn't unleashing but he was there you could see the creative process but still even though he was just marking it and rehearsing it and everything it was still phenomenal so you can only but try to imagine how that would have amplified by the time he hit the stage. Like we see the rehearsals to the Dangerous Tour on YouTube. And then you see what the final outcome was by the time he got on stage and presented the Dangerous Tour to the world. And it had just, it was just explosive. So I really feel that it was a really, really interesting, beautiful celebration of Michael's vision and the, the entire uh, crew their vision, the collaborative vision and effort that was This Is It. I think it was a really wonderful thing because it 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 stopped it from just quote unquote going to waste. And on the back end of that, of course, you know, you guys travel the world from place to place doing various parts of the show, like the drill and they don't care about us and so on. Mm -hmm. um, celebrating Michael's vision, you know, not stopping at, hey, he passed and that's it. No, 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 no. The legacy continues forever and we're going to give you as close as we can the experience of what Michael would have wanted you to see as this is it. And I think that was a really wonderful thing to do. I think, yeah, I think this is the, the film. I, I think that was the silver lining. Now, I don't know if Michael, well, no, I know that if Michael were still alive, no one would have ever seen that film because it, we weren't making a film. We were never making a film. All that footage it was- just like archive, wasn't it? Well, I mean, there there were always um, people filming, you know, rehearsals and stuff, just yes, for archives. But, but a lot of that footage was even from Travis's camera, like just from shooting rehearsals so he could watch it. And, oh, like, wow. Oh yeah, so these were just, this was footage from many different people's cameras. This, no one was shooting a film. It never wow. was intended to be a film, but of course, I personally am so grateful for that film because I think it allowed so many more people to be able to see yes. than would have been able to live. I also think it gave people a chance to see the person, you know, and, and how Absolutely. interesting it is to like, you really see that whole thing come together and be put together yeah. in different elements and aspects. I mean, it takes a village. It takes a huge amount of people to pull something that huge together. And I right. think it's a great blessing, um, a silver lining is the best word. Uh, I'm, re I'm really glad that that happened. And I think that the fans, most of the fans, hopefully appreciated being able to see that in cell view. Yeah. Yeah, And I think people's um, inside look at not only Michael's creative process, but as you say, you know, the person, the, how humble and gentle um, and patient he was with everyone, how sweet and, and uh, you know, there's no ego there. It's just, you know, it's all for love, L-O-V-E, it's all for love, you know. And I think that was, especially from people who were none the wiser, who had, you know, uh, only known Michael as this, uh, you know, this kind of fictitious character with these fabricated stories projected uh, from the media. I think that was really eye-opening. And I really feel that, you know, it, it either reignited a lot of um, people's love for Michael or it helped plant the seed to a lot of people's love for Michael. And they went, okay, wow, you know, this isn't just like, you know, a creative God. This is a really sweet, humble, down-to-earth person, a creative genius who's just a really sweet person. Well, interestingly enough, you know, 
uh, we happened to be in Japan, I think, after Michael's passing, a, a while after, maybe even a year. And we met this whole group of kids, literally five years old to 12 years old, maybe. They all were dressed like Michael. They performed for us. They were just, you know, so incredibly talented. But these were people that, you know, they didn't know Michael from anything but this is it because right. they were too young. So they didn't even know the Michael that most of us know. Exactly. It. it did create a lot of new fans, especially young ones. It's always been so interesting to me how much kids tend to love Michael and are drawn to yeah. him. Yeah, it's, it's interesting you say that. I have a seven-year-old nephew who, since he was five, has been absolutely fixated and like just mesmerized by Michael, completely captivated by him. And he always says to me, Uncle Danny, can you do a Michael Jackson dance? You know, and, and I mean, when, when I do my shows and I go around, you know, I'll, I'll go like all over the world, all different cultures, in the Middle East, in the West, all over Europe, whatever. Um, and, you know, one day you'll be doing like a club or a theater or even like if you're doing private events where it's like a wedding or a 30th birthday party or a 60th birthday party, but then you get hired for a job where you're doing a five-year-old's birthday party or a nine-year-old's birthday party and they are dressed from head to toe in everything Michael. They know all the moves, all the choreography, all the songs. They have the glove, you know, the fedora. I mean, it's phenomenal. And I've always said, you know, Michael's appeal is so universal and so infinite you know he he appeals to every race religion color creed nationality he's he you know he he really brings so many people together he he, he has that that thing that even politicians can't you know where where you know you can you can say oh well if there's any one thing we have in common it's our love and admiration for michael jackson i mean i'll, I'll, I'll go to somewhere like say dubai or bahrain or or Egypt, and you have small kids, but you have fully grown men as well. Michael, 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 you know, like, and just the, the outpour of affection and appreciation, even though they know it's not, you know, the real Michael Jackson, just a tribute artist, but the outpour of affection uh, is just so beautiful to see because you see that, that, that the phenomenal impact that Michael, um, has on people's lives and will always have. I mean, you know, I always say Michael will forever continue to pluck the heartstrings of billions the world over long, long after we're gone. And um, his his influence is just is so beautiful to see. Yeah, it really is. It, it's um, it's nice to see that it's still here, and that's been a big thing for Travis and I is to, especially in the. I mean, always, but we we always wanted to keep his his legacy alive we always we always really wanted to do some other version of this is it you know yeah. we really did we wanted the especially those dancers to get to perform it finally right um it never happened sadly except that we did get to bring the dancers to japan um and orianthi our guitarist uh and we did a, a small little version of this is it there you know, wow. I don't remember maybe seven numbers or something, which was really nice because that was the only time they got to to perform. But like in um, Tokyo or somewhere. That was in Tokyo. It was for TV right. and then there was a small live audience. But that was really nice to do. Um we've done a couple other things with the brothers, the Jacksons. Wow. Um, after and then of course, you know, like now we're trying to we do a class every month where we teach some kind of Michael choreography or sometimes it's new choreography to a Michael song, you know, and yeah, we do that once a month. We have a web series. Yeah, we have a web yeah, where, can, where can people find more out about, about all of that? Cause we want, we want to talk about that too. Yeah. Well, the easiest thing to do is to go to any of our pages. So I'm state at Stacy Alexis Walker, um, or you can go to at Travis Payne one, or we have the real Travis and Stacy. Um, so any of our pages, if you go to the link tree, it, it'll tell you what's going on, you know, our, what our right. class is that month, how to register. Um, it tells you about our web series called Remembering MJ, which right now is only available to Europe, but a lot of you guys I are in Europe. So, um, but you know, I could, 
I could show you the trailer. Should I show them the trailer? Let's do it. Absolutely. Guys, let's take a look at this. This is um, a beautiful web series by Stacy and uh, Travis, as Stacy just said, called Remembering MJ. Um, Can you see my screen yet? Oh, wait. Uh, hold on. I was going to click it and it's disappeared. Okay. Let's try it again. You have it, you have it there. We're live. We're live. Yeah, that's okay. Uh -huh. Now, should I try to share now? Yeah, go for it. Bear okay. with us, people. Here, this we have a do it. We have a beautiful right? trailer to show you. Do you see it? Um, Hold on, here we go. I don't, well, here we go. All right. Yeah. Okay, great. I'm going to add to stream. Here we go, guys. All right, take a look at this. Here we go. Some guy that says he's Michael Jackson's on the phone, and I'm like, what? So glorious to do any Michael Jackson job. It's like a fantasy. The blessing of working with Michael is you just have the best of the best of the best. Is it the biggest, the best, and has no one ever done it before? Those are just some of the reasons why Michael Jackson is Michael Jackson. Welcome back to Remembering MJ. I'm Travis. And I'm Stacy, and we are remembering... This is it. Ghosts. Dangerous. The history tour. We continue to be, you know, shocked and amazed at, you know, Michael's legacy and his influence globally. But I would just say that he had a great heart and, and that every time that he went out there, that there was a purpose that was, you know, that, that, that lit the flame in his soul and, and, and enabled him to get out there every night and do the kind of work that he did. Amen. Amazing. Yay. I love that. Absolutely okay. fantastic. Guys, um, also just to let everyone know that if you want to view that trailer again or go to the link um, provided in, in, in the trailer to, to view this series, that uh, is in the um, video description right here. So just click the link below and, uh, and you guys can watch that again or, or um, find out more. And that's really wonderful as well to hear from you guys, from yourself and Travis and Kenny. Um, we know that Kenny has been with Michael since the Dangerous Tour. By the way, a little trivia for those of you who didn't already know it. Kenny choreographed um, Dirty Dancing, didn't he? Yes, yes. So he was choreographing Patrick Swayze before he was choreographing Michael um, and, and working with Michael. But, uh, yeah, just a little, a little fun trivia fact there. But, yeah, so uh, um, Kenny's been with Michael um, since the Dangerous Tour. And, of course, Stacey, you would have first met um Kenny, when you first met Michael on, um, no, when you, you first met Michael on Ghosts, so you would have right. met Kenny on the History Tour about a year later, right? I guess that was the first time I met Kenny. I can't even remember. I've worked with Kenny several times, even non michael oh. related things. Oh, you have? Wow. Yeah. Um, but probably that would have been the first time I met him, I think, if I remember correctly. It's funny what you remember and what you don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Probably, but the, but remembering MJ is something that Travis and I started doing this past year during the pandemic because we had time because most of our work had just stopped, right? Right, right. We, we literally just started contacting all of our friends who had worked with Michael and and we did maybe 31 interviews. So we talked to people, wow. we talked to set designers, wardrobe, band members, dancers, choreographers, um, you know, all, all sorts of different people. So it, it was really Amazing. fun to remember him with so many different people. I'm yeah, sorry. remembering, celebrating. Yeah, so so it's a really mm -hmm. fun web series if you're interested. It's only every month we do a different subject. So this month is This Is It. But it's only right. available um, through the end of June. Then we moved, I think next month we do Ghosts. Oh, amazing. Yeah. And you, you were telling me before when we were on the phone that you, you have your ghost's mask, but it's kind of disintegrated into almost nothing over the years, isn't it? I know. I have it you here. Got, I told you I would show it to you. We, we have a bowl of dust that is a very special bowl of dust. <laughs> well, that's my actual face. Wow. Okay, that's your mold, your that's face mold. About, yeah. But um, And yeah. then down here at the bottom, like this is – this is my mask, like, but it's, it's, sorry, it's all backwards here. But <laughs> all the pieces are down in here, but yeah. Well, like prosthetic, I, they glued on, yeah? 
it was glued on every day. It would take about two hours to, to glue on, um, and about, you know, uh, maybe 30 minutes to get off, but I will right. show you, um, use that. You have to use that. But was it, was it Maztex glue that you used? <gasps> okay, okay, there you so are. Right. And then, uh, right, 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 me. Wow. Oh, that's, so that's airbrushed mm -hmm. makeup, which is really, oh, man, you look badass. Right. It's, oh, well, wow, I, look I told them I still want to be cute. And so, <laughs> so they made me cute. So this standard, is the standard demand from from ghosts uh, from the dead. Well, look at that. So that's the actual prosthetic. So basically, I was cute from the bottom. I had a beauty mark and red lips, and then the top of my face was torn off. So, I love that. But I was one of the lucky ones because a lot of people's mouths were sewn shut. Oh, really? Yeah, which would have been terrible for me because. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah, because I actually when they did the. Um, mold of my face they put cement you know over your eyes ears mouth and then the, they were going around my nose and i inhaled and i sealed my face shut oh my gosh and i couldn't talk because my mouth was already sealed so i just started waving my arms because i couldn't breathe oh, no way. yeah and uh they you know that's when they're doing the pasta cost isn't it yeah yeah so they broke it open and I lived to tell about it, <laughs> but ever since then, I've been really claustrophobic all because of right. that. Like it closed. Wow. So that job was pretty hard. It was pretty hard for me. That'll be, it's a very interesting um, series next month on ghosts. We, you get to hear a lot about, I mean, the number one thing people say about ghosts is it was the hardest job I've ever done. <laughs> it was hard. Really? Was so hard on every level. Yeah. The dancing was hard. The prosthetics and makeup was hard. You know, you were getting. But it sprayed. paid off because it's one of the best, like, dance routines ever that marries to the sound and the music in such an insanely phenomenal way. Well, that you know that whole, op that whole opening. You know, I mean, the reason it's so married to the music is because the great thing about working with Michael is you also you created both. Like, yes, you had music, and then you created choreography. But right. as you were creating choreography, you would say, hey, can you add a snap there or a right. or Yes, yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? All that stuff's called Foley, Foley work. So those are like adding in the sound effects. So, you know, we did that on This Is It too. We would have, you know, Mike McKnight, um, a sound engineer, right in the rehearsal room with us every day. Wow. So as, I mean, as choreography was happening, we'd be like, hey, on the four, can you add a crash and then on the eight can you add a clap or a what you know or a stomp or so at right. all the music and the dance were very interconnected which is what That's makes amazing. it so so cool right unbelievable and you guys you were filming like what in april may of 96 so you would have started your initial rehearsals some months earlier yeah i this is my very first job in la weirdly so and, and and after you say your 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 next part about when you guys started your your first rehearsals, it'll be cool to go into what we spoke about on the phone about how you entered the world of Michael, how how that came about. But we'll we'll jump into that in a second. But you guys would have um you would have started your initial rehearsals February, I say. Oh, yeah, March. I, I would say I think I moved to LA in February. So, and, uh, and then I guess I was part of the skeleton crew, which means it's just a small handful of dancers kind of start just to start working out some ideas. And then maybe a couple weeks later, the whole cast comes in. So right. maybe we started the end of February, but probably mostly March, April. I, and we probably rehearsed for at least six weeks, um, and shot for, well, I think Travis says 40 days and 40 nights. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, so, you know, it was a pretty long job. That was a pretty That's long phenomenal. first job in, in LA. So the, how I got that job, how I think I got the job is I was working at Disney, Disney world in Florida at the time as a dancer. And, um, you know, I had actually grown up with Travis in Atlanta backstory so we knew each other when we were kids we did shows together here and there 
we trained in different schools, but we, we knew of each other. And um, so I knew Travis, but oddly, Lavelle Smith had come down to Pleasure Island where I was working at Disney World, it was one of the shows I did, and saw me dancing there because we had a mutual friend. Too hard to explain, but anyway. Um, so I, I really think, cause you would ask me, oh, Travis got you the job. But I think it was a combination of Lavelle and Travis. I think Lavelle saw me and probably mentioned it to Travis and they were like, oh yeah, I know Stacy, you know, so. Right, right. So basically, yeah, I think that was just a so, so lucky that Lavelle happened to be there, happened to see me that night, happened to mention it to Travis and then happened to offer me that first job with Michael, which really ended Amazing. up changing my whole life, really. Absolutely. The very sweet and wonderful Lavelle Smith, you guys know him, of of course, and Travis pulling you both into Michael's work. That's, that's incredible. Um, and of course, at the same time you're working with Michael on Ghosts, you're also having the pleasure of working with the legendary Stan Winston. Oh my gosh, yes, yes. What a nice guy yeah. he was too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very, very, um, kind. yes. So talented. His crew, you know, uh, for those of you that don't know, Stan Winston directed Ghosts, but also Jurassic Park and was also responsible for all those special effects you see in so many movies. Um, exactly. So I think Ghosts, as far as I'm aware, and I could be wrong, Ghosts was either his only or one of very few uh, directing jobs that he took because he was the special effects guru he was a special effects master i mean he did everything on terminator terminator 2 aliens uh, all those movies edward scissorhands batman returns i mean everything phenomenal you guys have seen in a movie that looks like it just burst out of someone's dream and you couldn't imagine how it could be brought to life more than likely stan winston was a was was responsible for that uh, unfortunately you know stan passed um relatively young yeah. Um, but, but his 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 legacy lives on and of course in in ghosts among many other things and how was that working with stan because he and michael had gotten to know each other because stan did the special effects makeup on, on the wiz um yeah you know i i think that exactly i think michael and stan had been working on this ghosts idea for quite a long time before it actually started. Travis will also tell you more about this when you speak with him. Um, but I think really ghosts started years before 96. They had tried to just kind of start it a couple years before, but then- Yeah, they did it in 93 as part of the Adams Family Values, right? And then the allegations hit well, and it I fell apart. I think really it fell apart because um, it didn't fall apart. I think they decided to pause because a lot of the technology that they wanted to use wasn't quite. Oh, there. So I they, see, I see. yeah. So I think they waited for that technology to catch up, and so wow, six it was kind of ready to go again, and that's when they actually were able to fulfill that that destiny. Right. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, that's Stan, incredible. I mean, I. I remember when, when very much like Michael Stan was um, very just sweet and funny and soft spoken, like not a boss in the best way. Right. In the best way. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was really, really nice. I bet. I bet that they had a nice relationship, the two of them. Yeah, and yeah, I think, yeah. I think they worked really well together. Really, really sweet and humble, but phenomenally talented. Right. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna whisk through some of these um, comments because or questions because we haven't we haven't answered any, so I don't want anyone to feel left out. And guys, in advance, my sincere apologies if I leave anyone's questions out. But um, okay, we have we have someone. Uh, I don't think it's a question. It's just more of a nice message. Uh, Jackson, go eighty one. Stacy, it would be amazing to see you again next year at Michael Week in LA. Fans would love to see you there. And spent time with you, miss you, dear Stacy. Last time, it's too long ago. Much love, Jenny. Thank oh, you for your sweet comment. That's so nice. I Thank hope to be there too. Um, it, yes, in person. That would be so nice. Um, let me see this. Let me see this. Bear with me, guys. Bear with me. Let's have a look. Uh, just more really sweet comments right here. Missing you, Stacy. Um, 
you know, I haven't got my glasses on. I should put my glasses on. Most of this is a blur. Stacy, I should, I, should, I should take a leaf out of your book. As Michael says, promise you won't laugh if I put these on. Oh, right, I have to wear them now. I never wore glasses my whole life. Now I can't see anything. I have to wear them. <laughs> oh, there you are, Stacy. <laughs> um, <laughs> here we go. I, I saw a question that said, how long did it take to uh, to rehearse for Ghosts? And I okay, think great. That was, that was a pretty long one. That was like, you know, I kind of said it, I guess, but probably about a month and a half at least of rehearsals and then almost a month and a half of shooting. So it was about a three month job. It took some time, but then remember two years prior to that already, they were conceiving ideas. So, right. so really it, it took years. It took years. Because of course you've got pre-production, you've got rehearsals and then you've got the filming and then you've got post-production. It's a whole, yeah. it's a whole process, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Okay, yeah, someone says, what's your favorite song to perform? But you said earlier, Smooth Criminal. Um, yeah. Okay, guys, keep your questions coming in. I am trying to, I feel, uh, I feel, it says, uh, oh, okay, someone said, all right, we'll do this just for you. I, I think we answered this earlier, but um, uh, I'm sorry, I just tuned in. Stacy. where did you first start dancing? And actually, that's, that's a good question. I was going to ask you that myself. And when did you start dancing with michael so yeah let's let's get into stacy also i mean in regard to the last part of that question ghosts right when you first started dancing with michael yeah. um but let's stacy let's go into your journey as a dancer how you got into the world of dance how you discovered that was your passion that was your talent and um who and what you noted around you growing up in pop, dance, entertainment, culture, um, and what inspired you, what motivated you, what drove you to, um, you know, take you on to the journey? Well, I think my story is kind of not what you might expect, but um, my mom put me in dance when I was five, totally hated it, wanted to quit. <laughs> I really did. I was like, you know, and my Thank goodness my you did. Yeah, my dance teacher um, at the time, her name was Becky Stahl. Who I'm still in touch with to this day, she said, wow. "No, no, you should keep her in. I think, I think there's something there. I think she's good." So luckily, my mom kept me in, and you know, as the years went on, I started enjoying dance more, and I got pretty good at it in high school, and even did some professional work, you know, throughout high school. But I never thought I'd be a professional dancer. I, after high school, I went to college. I majored in psychology and communications. And it just, it didn't occur to me that it was even realistic to be a dancer. So I just right. went on to become a real person. <laughs> and then um, I graduated from college and I got a real job. And as I was driving there that morning, I thought, oh my God, am I going to drive here every day? Wow. And do this? So at lunch, I drove to the dance studio and I called and I quit. And then I danced <laughs> ever since. So um, so after after college, uh, the short story is I, I got a job at Disney World in Florida and did many shows there for about two and a half years, which was an awesome experience. I learned so oh, much. Yeah. Um, you know, I learned about costumes and eyelashes and wigs and all you know like it was I it was dressing as all the disney characters well i wasn't really a character we they actually have shows there um so i did this can can show and i did pleasure island which pleasure island is a little more racy it's it's a island of nightclubs actually so you have to be 21 to get in and oh wow! Every night's New Year's Eve. They don't have it anymore, but they did for many years. So every night's New Year's Eve, and we would do shows all night, and then a big New Year's Eve show at midnight. And you know that was more MTV style, like bras right. and yeah. sequins, and you know it was it was more that. Huh. But so that's where I got my start, and that's where um, I said this. But to answer some of you just tuned in, that's where Lavelle came and saw me in a show. Right. Which, then was the catalyst as to how I got ghosts. Amazing. And that was, it's funny because uh, you getting the job of all places uh, in, in, in Disney World in Florida was kind of the seed that was just waiting to be flowered, uh, waiting to be watered to blossom into what would become your career with Michael and being known all over the world and being 
a part of such a phenomenal legacy and contributing massively to that. Yeah, I mean, it's a good lesson. You know, you never know who's watching. I, I never know who's watching. I, I have to say, I've gotten, I've gotten several jobs from just someone seeing me in another show. You know, it happened to me in Atlanta when I was in high school. I was doing, I was performing with my dance company at some festival, and some the, the, the producer of this show called Rocky Horror Live. Right. We did that in Atlanta. It was called Rocky Horror Live. And I don't know if you all know who RuPaul is. Do you know RuPaul? Yes, of course, of course. Well, RuPaul was from Atlanta and he was uh, not quite famous at that time, like now, but he was Riff Raff. And, uh, but anyway, I got that job because, you know, someone just happened to see me in a show. And I've, it's happened to me probably four or five times in my life. So you never wow. know who's watching, right? You never know you never what know who's a watching. small thing can lead to something. Exactly. So always perform like it's like it's the last performance you're gonna do. Like it's yeah. give it your all because you never know whose whose eyes are on you. That's right. That's incredible. Um, we we have uh, a question here from Matt Bond. What piece of advice do you think Michael would give us if he was with us today? Oh, I think you know his message was always to be kind to one another to to spread love, to take care of the environment. You know, his his messages were never really about performing or dancing or singing. It was more about the world and people, the people in it and how we can all work together to make it a, a more loving place. Let it, let alone like for ourselves, but also for our environment. I think that would still be his message today, which is more relevant than ever. Absolutely. And I remember and this is it. Michael's like, we've got 12 years to get it right. We need to put love back into the world and show that love, love is important. And that's what I like about, you know, this is it as a film is that it keeps his message alive, you know? So, yes. so people may argue that, oh, Michael may not have wanted that. No, I think he would rather his message still be out there than not. Absolutely. Because this is it. It, it, it wasn't, you know, an advert for revenue, it it really did capture Michael's message and it projected what was at the core of Michael's heart, as you said. Right, that's right. Um, we have a cool question here. Did you ever have to do a performance when you were sick? If so, did you get through it and able to breathe? Thank you, Catherine. Yes, um, yeah, I never missed a performance, but yes, I, I remember in, um, I think it was Tunis, um, is that like Northern Africa, I believe? Yeah, Tunis is the uh, capital of Tunisia. Yes. Up, in, up in, in North Africa, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, I, I had some kind of stomach bug, but I was, yeah, that was, it's hard to perform when you're sick, but you know what? I've, I've only had to do it a handful of times. Um, it happened to me on another tour as well. And I was really sick. Like I was crying before I was just so sick. Oh, but then for some reason when you get on stage, the sickness just goes away. It's weird. The adrenaline hits you. Yeah. So yeah, I've always made it through. It's. I think dancers just do that in general. Power. Yeah. You know, even if you're hurt, right. you just do it. Yeah. You're made for the stage. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I was just remembering something I wanted to um uh, mention earlier. Um, because we were talking about stuff that you were running through in This Is It. Um, and it looked like you guys were uh, like walking through dangerous, the dangerous choreography. Yeah. You know, with the, it looked like she was kind of like a Russian ballet teacher that was kind of going through stretches and stuff with the with the guys. Oh, yeah. um, but but that was probably a separate day. They kind of linked those shots together, I guess. Yeah. Yes. But it definitely looked like you guys were 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 putting it in. A, and I always remember a great line from you. I don't know. I have nothing to grab. <laughs> I remember that. I just remember that was a giggle part of of, of the movie. That was great. Um, I mean, and we, oh my god, we would dissect everything. Like, are you? Are we just putting your hand on it? Are you grabbing it? Are right, you right. It? Are you it's like? Funny, no. yeah. I was like, oh my god, you guys. I do not know. <laughs> I mean, it was you have to go to the main source. You have to go to the main. Michael, how are we grabbing it? <laughs> but yeah, that is so funny. But. um I'll never forget that. But those were two different scenes put together. But here's a bit of trivia that some of you may not know. That Russian ballet teacher 
was Misha's mom. Misha is one of the no dancers. Way. That's his mom. Well, so the the way you make me feel, girl. Well, no, no, not the way you make me feel, girl. But in did you? I think you were referencing that rehearsal. We were all in there with a Russian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teacher. That Russian right. play teacher. She is Misha's mom. Misha's one of the dancers. Yeah. Misha is one of the dancers. Yeah. So wow. that's okay. Interesting. I never knew that. So we would have. Um, I think we'd do a ballet class with the dancers twice a week. We also did some, like, I think Pilates um, twice a week. Like, we would have different people come in just for training, just for, you know, to keep people in, in shape. Not that they weren't in shape from all the dancing, but um, it was just like body conditioning. But that's how Misha got into, uh, if you remember Misha, one of the dancers. He was one of the favorites. Oh, certainly one of my favorites. I love them all. But. Um, his mom was always a ballet mistress. So, you know, we bought Oh, her. Misha. Okay, I do apologize. I thought you were, I thought it was referencing to one of the female dancers. I do no. apologize. Yes, Misha, one of the guys. Okay, all right. Whoops. As No, no. Oh, wow. Right. How cool. Yeah. Um, what a great job to be on with your mom. Right? That's kind oh, of funny. Speaking of speaking of a job, I was going to ask you when when you were feeling that whole conveyor belt thing, you know, when you were like, "Do I have to come here every day?" and that kind of mot motivated you to, to to get um a job dancing. What what was the job that that you had no, at the time? It was like marketing research, something like that. I never even got oh. in. I don't even know what I was going to be doing, but it just worlds apart, worlds world apart. apart. Because really. I'm not really an artsy person, believe it or not. I'm more, I'm sort of more businessy, organized. Like that is more my personality. So, yeah. So it's weird that I did this as a business because I like knowing what I'm doing and I like order and schedule, which in in the dance world you have none of. You never know. Exactly. When you're it's, it's scary. Absolutely. It's, but I kind of think that was the universe's way of balancing me out because if I was in a job that was so scheduled, I would just be so, you know, this keeps me a little bit free. Yeah. Stimulated. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We have a cool question here. What secrets or experience do you have with Michael on the history tour? Did he pull any pranks or was he just in the zone from Ian? Thank you, Ian. Um, yes, he was very funny. He, he loved joking around like he thought it was so, I don't know if any of you saw the history tour, but I think after Beat It, like we did this whole little baseball scene. Yes. Well, that was just so funny to him. He just thought that was hilarious. And, you know, we, he was just funny. He, he, I remember him like going up to, there was always like two cameramen on stage shooting the live show, you know, for the big jumbotrons behind the stage. Yeah. Um, so, you know, he would always go up to a camera and, you know, punch it for being right, right. <laughs> he would always apologize after to make sure they knew. <laughs> and this was on this bit too. He would do that on every tour. He was just funny. He was, he loved, um, I think he loved pranks and joking around. He didn't do it so, so much while we were working. Cause when we right. were, because really I, I wouldn't say Michael was a friend of mine necessarily. Like we didn't hang out and go to the movies and he was pretty private. You know, we would work together and then he would go home and we would do, right. we would go back to our home or hotel or whatever. So, yeah. so when we were working, it was definitely more work, but he definitely had a, a funny giggly side. You know, he, he was, he liked humor for sure. That's great. The, yeah. the, the baseball part, that's interesting. You brought that up. The, the baseball part, um, at the end of Beat It was so fabulous and random. Whose idea was that? You know, ask Travis that too, because I don't really know. I think it was Michael's, because I think he just he just liked the whole baseball thing, you know? So I want to say it was Michael's. Um, okay. Ask Travis, because <laughs> he might remember better. I so love that. I just remember thinking, like, there was, I think Kevin Dorsey was playing like a hot dog man, you know, like, it was it, it was just brilliant. And one um uh the brothers um rich and tone right they were actually 
batting a ball into the audience. Yeah. I was yeah. thinking, man, sorry to the person that might have hit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. No, that was fun. Oh, this is this is interesting. Do you ever get stage fright? Have you ever experienced stage fright? I not really. I don't really get stage fright at all. Usually I'm uh, usually I'm more powerful on stage, I would say, or feel more in control on stage. That doesn't right. mean I've not ever been nervous. Like if I felt like maybe I wasn't quite as prepared as I wanted to be, or, you know, sometimes the rehearsal processes for different shows are so quick. You're just like, Oh, I hope this works. So yeah. I've had nerves, but I don't really get stage fright necessarily. Right. 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 It's, it's that performer in you. It's what I call the Clark Kent Superman transition, you know, like I think so. you get on stage and you just erupt. Yeah, I've always felt like a different person on stage. I'm much, I think on stage I'm, yeah, well, I guess I use the word powerful. I feel more powerful on stage, more in control, where in real life I'm much quieter, much right. shyer, you know, but on stage yeah. I'm not shy at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just open right up. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, okay, from DJ Hush Puppy. How long did the auditions take for you to pick through the dancers for This Is It? Also, on the tail end of that question, um, whose choice was that? Obviously, Michael's, but Michael's uh, and Kenny's and Travis's, like, they would discuss it between them. Um, hmm, this is a good question. First of all, I think the auditions were like three or four days. We did like a full day of all women and then a full day of all the men. And then we narrowed it down and brought them back and had a call back. And of course, Michael came to the call back. So it was it was a matter of days. And we had we had many, many, many people auditioning. It was a really fun audition. Everyone wow. learning that iconic choreography. That was the best thing about it. So many people after the audition were like, this was so much fun. Like they didn't even care if they got it or not it was just so cool wow learn it and then have michael there you know like it was cool so of the course, choreography looked like a mixture of smooth criminal and dangerous uh yes it was a combination of both and uh wow. and we actually teach the actual audition to this is it in some of our oh, yeah. amazing you guys yeah. look out for that yeah so amazing. Uh, it, it, went off it, it was hard it was it was it was hard but but very good um, but so, yes, I think choosing the dancers was interesting because obviously, um, Michael, Travis and Kenny were there discussing, but what's interesting is the different opinions and who wanted who and for what reasons. And, um, I'm sitting here deciding what I'm going to share with you right now and how much, Ooh. um, <laughs> I will say that at the end of the day, we we weren't able to get everyone that was initially cast because certain people were already contractually with other artists like Madonna or Cher. Yeah, so I was going to say the girl. Sorry to interrupt, Stacey. Um, uh, I forget her name. I know her name and my mind's gone blank. Oh. But the girl who was in the yeah. Hollywood Tonight video. Was, was it Sophia? Yes. Yeah. Sophia Patella. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, she was one person that wasn't available. Yes. Uh, and a couple guys too. Um, so we ended up having a smaller call, like a callback to a callback, which in my mind was a huge, huge blessing because I, I personally didn't agree with everybody that was initially cast. Um, I had my own reasons and I was much more pleased after that final casting. Oh, wow. Yeah. I just, and there was a little bit of bartering that went on. Okay. If you get so-and-so, then I get so-and-so, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, really? Really? Yeah. 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 This is beautiful to, to discuss because especially for any aspiring dancers out there, it's good for you to realize that, you know, it's not like science. It's just an opinion. You know, and my opinion might be very different from Travis's opinion, and Travis right. might be very different from Kenny's, and Kenny's might be different. Right. From people's. We all like people for different reasons, and sure. sometimes we don't like people for 
weird reasons like oh well, that guy reminds me of my ex-boyfriend he's not going to get the job like that's not <laughs> you know, yeah bad luck all, all this comes into play so you know if you ever audition for something and don't get it it doesn't mean you're not the best or you know yeah just, don't take it personal yeah or maybe you're not the right height or we're looking for something gonna to say or you know we're looking for someone more voluptuous or less voluptuous or taller right or i don't know what it could be a a whole handful of things but at the end of the day, I will say I fell in love with every one of those dancers. And I was so grateful with who we ended up with. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. And I mean, they were a phenomenal crew. They all worked so well together. It looked beautiful. Um, yeah, we all got along really well. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, I was just going to ask you, actually, was it was the final decision also influenced by um, the personality behind the talent? Well, oftentimes for a tour, especially, that comes into play because, you know, these people are going to be together for a long time. Right. And it wasn't a tour because, you know, it was a more of a residency. Um, it, it, you know, when you're touring, you're on a bus together. You're on like you are together, you know. So yeah, it, I do think that's important. Now, the, the thing that comes into play with this is, you know, this was an international audition. So we didn't have the the pleasure of knowing everyone personally at that point. So yeah. um, we, you know, as much as I think personality should come into play, it can't always because you just don't always know the person. Yeah, yeah, for we, sure. But it, it ended up being a great group and uh, a family for sure. And that was part of the devastation, like I said before of after Michael's passing was that, you know, not only did Michael pass, but our family was done. Right. Our family right. Was being split up immediately, you know, within an hour, bye, show's over, you know? And that, that was another tough thing on top of Michael's death to, yeah. to swallow. Yeah. You, these, these 12 years later, do you, do you, I mean, cause obviously literally this day, 12 years ago, you guys would have been, right in the mix of it mm -hmm. um in real households and so on and by now you were rehearsing in staples center weren't you um you know it's weird that you say that because i would say yes but i don't think that's true and the, oh, the really? yeah the weird thing is um i know this because a lot of us were deposed for a court situation and when they interview you, they ask like a lot of the same questions. And all of us thought we were at Staples Center for like a week or 10 days. But the truth is, I think we were only at Staples Center for three days. Oh, really? Yeah, but none and, of us remember and, it that way. I, I so we were, that, the, we were at the forum before. Right, okay. But, you know, we all remember being at Staples Center much longer than we actually were. So I don't know why that is, but it's an interesting tidbit, isn't it? Wow, how about that? Yeah, because I guess you you're kind of casting your mind back to it based on how many times you've viewed this is it x amount of times, you know, where you see it at the Staples Center. I mean, it's really strange to watch like w w when I see the shots that at least look like they're at the Staples Center uh from like the 23rd or whatever. It it's crazy cuz I kind of catch myself kind of looking at the seats, the empty seats in the background and thinking my goodness like you know, two weeks from that rehearsal day that those seats will be filled with people at Michael's Memorial, you know. Right. Wow. Um, yeah. But um, going back to the audition process, I remember uh, something really interesting that you said where you really hit the nail on the head. I remember you saying, um, if you haven't got that ooze coming out of you, you're not going to get the job. And I just thought that was such a cool way to put it. It was, it, it, it was just straight to the point. You just... You have to ooze that passion. It, you you know? know, it's like, it's this indescribable thing. Like you can't, I, I have a hard time putting words to it, but if, if you don't, it's a feeling, right? If you don't, just don't have that feeling, it, it, it's, you know, most people can learn the steps, right? That's, that's, there's a thousand people there that could, could have done it just fine. It, it's, it, it's what's on top of all those steps. It's that, yeah, yeah. it's the, the understanding of where all that movement comes from, you know, because there's, yeah. there's a difference in doing what you're told. Absolutely. Told. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's just yeah, with so much energy and aura. Yeah. There's, 
there's an extra little something you can't quite put your finger on. And you, but can't, it's really, you can't really teach it either. No, but you can see it and feel it when someone's doing it. Yeah. And yeah, those absolutely. dancers, oh, those dancers, they, they felt it. They loved it. You know what I mean? That's what Michael Amazing. would say. Michael would like watch some of the dancers and be like, he loves to dance. That's wow. what he would do. If Michael saw a dancer that loved to dance, that's who he wanted. Amazing. Um, I was, uh, oh, we were talking about this um, earlier before we went live. So I just, oh, I'll kind of uh, bring it up again um, since we are now live. Uh, about, yeah, it was on the year, the one year anniversary of Michael's passing. Um, I mentioned to you earlier that uh, I was in Paris at a dinner with uh, Jennifer Batten, yes. who I'd um, already become good friends with. And, and we were doing a show in Paris at the at the Zenith. And um, uh, Dorian was there, Dorian Holly. And we were at a dinner in the evening after the show. And um, Dorian was just kind of, Dorian and Jennifer were both kind of talking about the rehearsal process and everything. And um, but Dorian had said, and I asked you this earlier, and I know you said you weren't you weren't aware of it, but he had mentioned that um, in March 2010, when the This Is It tour was supposed to come to its initial end, that Michael had intended to take like a six month break and then to bring the tour back again, uh, move it either like to Mumbai or New York or somewhere. Um, what what is your take on that how much did you hear going around about if the if the this is it project wanted to be taken further extended or not i think that everybody wanted it to go further for sure um yeah. i didn't know of any exact plans like oh we're gonna go to mumbai first on this date and he's take i didn't really know about any six month break or anything definite like that but i i do know that there were plans Better word, there were hopes of bringing it to other places, not necessarily right. a tour, but like like a res residency in London, then maybe a residency, you know, somewhere else, somewhere else, somewhere else. So, you know, right, right. there for a while because it was, I think that would have been easier for Michael having had kids and all that, not to be going from city to city to city. Exactly, but, yeah. exactly. Yes, yeah. yeah. so I, I did I, think it was the hope. I don't know how how far along any of that. I I have no knowledge of it being set in stone, but yeah. I think it's a hope for sure. I mean, I I I'd say like the the demand was one hundred and fifty percent there. I mean, I remember I, I was in I was in the first like fifty people in the queue at the O2 Arena to get tickets because I was not going to stand by a laptop that was going to crash. And boy, the site crashed within minutes. I mean, we're talking about like. A, what, like a, a million tickets, just under a million tickets that sold out in less than an hour, you know? Um, uh, so the demand was there. I mean, I remember when it had all been sold out so quickly and walking with my tickets and going past the, this phenomenally long queue. I mean, for those of you that are familiar with uh, North Greenwich tube station that takes you to um, the O2 Arena, the queue of people who had not yet got tickets went from all the way uh, kind of before the, the barricades start for the, the box office, all the way back to the escalators by the station. And I remember walking past those people and the look of disappointment on there. I mean, there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. So the demand was there. The demand was there, you know, everyone, they were looking so forward to having Michael back. Everyone was charged and really, really enthusiastic. Yeah. Um, so that 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 demand was was most definitely there. Um, we have uh, another cool question here. Oh wait, if I tap here, here we go. Uh, oh wait, I've just I've just tapped on that one. That's not okay. Uh, it was a question. I'm not seeing it. Um, Sorry, guys. It's all right. Let me see here. Okay, I know something that I was going to ask you, and we kind of uh, tapped into it earlier. Um, was I? I mentioned to you, um, like, uh, what's this one here? <laughs> I'm a sad feel with the audience. Um, 
yeah, I mentioned to you that some friends of mine had been in LA at the time and had seen Michael from day to day. Mm. And um, one day he'd be really enthusiastic about the show and the rehearsals uh, and he'd be kind of charged. And the next day he'd be kind of different. You know, he would say like, uh, you know, I went to sleep and it was 10 shows. I woke up and it was 50. Um, what, what was your feeling? Uh, about Michael's level of enthusiasm um, for the show when you were around him during the, the the rehearsals for This Is It? You know, I never asked him that question, um, nor did he ever say, you know, I, I'm enthusiastic about this or I'm, I don't want to do this. He never said either to me. Right. Um, I, I mean, I always got the sense that he was enthusiastic about it. I, otherwise, I don't think he'd be doing it. Um, yeah. You know, I think it was, I, I think it was something he wanted to do. I don't think it was easy to just tell Michael Jackson to do something. You know, he was, he was still the boss, you know, it was still his show, right? So I never got the sense that he wasn't enthusiastic about it. Um, he always seemed happy to be there when he was with us. Yeah. So, you know, but again, I never had the conversation. I never flat out asked him, nor did right. he. So I guess I... I couldn't say for sure, but that would be my feeling around that. Yeah, sure. And and um, you never got a sense of one day Michael looked like, yep, he's all for it. And the next day he didn't seem too well. Or he didn't seem as, as charged or energetic. You, oh, you never saw that. Oh, I mean, I think we saw that with everybody. You know, you have right. every human being. Yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes you're just not feeling it, and sometimes right. self now, and sometimes you're like all about it. You know, so I think we all have off days. Um, you know, and I, I did just kind of see a question from Damien saying 50 shows. Um, what was he thinking? You know, I think everyone has to keep in mind this was not 50 shows in a row. Right, this, right. This was 50 shows like once or twice a week. So this was not a schedule that was impossible for a performer, you know, Broadway is, is six days a week, eight shows a week. This was right. not that. This was right. literally spread out over months and months. So this was not 50 shows in a row. This was like maybe one or two shows a week. So I don't think that was ever, I don't think that scared Michael at all because when you're on tour, when we toured for history, you know, even that wasn't a hard tour. We, we usually did maybe three, four shows a week. But nowadays, tours are like, boy, they're like five or six shows a week, you know? Yeah, because now they rely on tours to really market and promote the album because album sales don't do what they once did because of streaming and illegal downloading and all this kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah. Oh, I, I see here we have a question <laughs> from my wife. Selena, who Hi, is upstairs. Selena. She's upstairs keeping the children quiet for me. <laughs> uh, were you ever uh, worried about Michael's appearance or weight loss? Did, did, did you notice anything with, with Michael's, with oh, Michael's I, weight? As you all saw the movie, um, I think he was definitely thinner than he used to be, for sure. Um, you know, I just didn't have that. Most of us did not have that personal relationship with him where uh, anything, you know, like I, I didn't know what he ate or what he didn't eat or what it, you know, what his doctors were saying, or, you know, we, I was, did, just didn't have that relationship with him. We just worked together. So, you know, yeah. I don't really, I think we can all agree. He was, um, thinner than he was like on the history tour, but you know, yeah, you know, that's, that's, that's interesting, Stacey. I, I, I remember exactly one week um before uh michael passed um in fact i remember it was on father's day that year uh because i went out with my um parents and my brother and, and i was discussing it um and my brother was like into health and fitness and uh, so on and basically the it, it was a facebook message from a friend who had been into the um this is it rehearsals and uh, just basically saying that she had noticed that like, basically Michael crouched over and she had seen how incredibly thin um, that he was. And 
I remember Phil and, and she had basically forwarded the response that she had gotten from Karen Fain regarding that. And, and I remember thinking like, you know, kind of naively, Hey, you know, Michael's a father. He's, he's always been skinny. As you said, like on the history tour, it's his natural build to be very, very slim. You know, um, he dances all the time. Um, you know, he's not known for being, you know, very heavy or anything like that. And, and that, ah, uh, you know, he'll be fine. And, but of course, you know, the pressure that he had, uh, especially like after the trial, you know, having increased anxiety and insomnia and all this stuff. Um, I just never expected it. And I remember that email exactly one week before. Um, but in the movie, when you watch it, I mean, yeah, you can see Michael's slim or thin, mm -hmm. but he looks relatively happy as, yeah. as, as far as I can but, but then he's on stage, you know? Well, I mean, and that's the thing, you know, and whenever you saw Michael, he was on stage pretty much, you know? So yeah. I, I think that it's easy now to look back and, and say, didn't you know, didn't you notice? But you know, the things that were going on behind closed doors weren't even, had never ever been thought about before. Or I, you know, n I mean, I was never at his house, <laughs> you know, I was never, it, yeah. you know, I, I think that it was unimaginable what was happening at his home. That was not even, yeah. We've all heard about people that drink too much or do too much drugs or whatever. Right. It was not that, you know, this was something yeah, we've yeah, yeah. heard of. We've never even, I don't, you know, have any experience or knowledge of that in, in the past. Yeah. So I don't think there were even signs to look for because nobody knew what was happening necessarily. Exactly. And also, that, but, you know. Yeah. And also like while you're in the mix of it, you know, you have your job to do, you're focused, and you're just, you know, one day to the next thinking, well, everyone's just getting on with the job. We've got, the, you know, we're going to London in a week. We've got the first show in two weeks. You're just kind of getting on with what you're getting on with. Well, you know, also, I, I think what people forget, and, I, and this occurred to me in rehearsals, I can remember sitting there looking and thinking, wow, this is gonna be really unfair because people are gonna look at Michael Jackson and expect Michael at 30, but he was 50. That's the thing. And he was facing that pressure, wasn't he? And, and well, I mean, I, I am 50 now and I, you know, my body is different. It's amazing. Oh, thank you. But you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you're, you uh, are different at, at 50. You are not the same as you are at 30. Right. So some people, as they age, they they lose weight. Some people gain weight. I mean, right. Travis has lost weight over the years. You know, um, I feel like, like I'm weight has been pretty consistent. consistent. But you know what I mean. Like, so I think people have to remember. You know, you can't look through the lens and expect to see Michael in his prime. Uh, yeah, and I'm saying he wasn't in his prime, but he was in his prime at fifty, not in his prime at thirty. It's a very right. very different thing and so yeah. those that have that expectation you know um yes, that's it, it. Difficult. and i think it would have been difficult you know but and, i think the, you, the great thing is there's a film and you can you can see what he looked like if you want to know yeah. what he looked like that's what he looked like you know and um it's hard for me to like say any more about it because yeah. that's what he looked like it, uh, he looked like the yeah. 50 year old version of michael jackson Right, right. And I, which I love in it. the film look great. Yep. You know, I mean, but you think how how much pressure can 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 one person cope with? You know. Well, the expectations. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, have a have a cool question. Actually, I was going to jump into something, um, uh, but I I don't want to miss this question. It's from a good friend of mine, Russ. Uh, Hi, Stacey, Danny. What was your favorite song of Michael, Stacey, that you wish he had performed live that he didn't? Oh, gosh, that he didn't? Do you have a song that, that, that you... Well, my you one of my favorite been... songs of Michael's is Human Nature. I don't know why. I just love that song so much. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but he did perform that. On... He did, right, right. Yeah, In the actually, Dangerous Crowd. Weird stories. 
when I saw the screening, the, when I went and met Kenny and Travis at Sony to like look at their first cut of the movie, um, that's when I started crying. Is when he's saying human nature. Wow. I don't know why. Wow. Yeah, that just affects me for some reason. He's, he's he was bang on. He was bang on. You know, like mm. his voice. He's just he was so in the moment. Yeah, but I. He was so but a favorite song that he didn't perform. I mean, there's just so many that. Where do you start? Weirdly, I do like Stranger in Moscow. He did that on History, but he wouldn't yeah. really do that on. Um, That's a great song. You know, um, it's not a huge hit, but I, I always I liked that sound of that song. Yeah, it's such a phenomenal sound. It's beautiful and so autobiographical, um, yeah. as is the whole History album. Um, that that just made me think. The choreography for um, Dangerous, Lavelle had initially choreographed for that he had initially choreographed that to Can't Let Her Get Away, which is on the Dangerous album, which is interesting because it also goes really, really well um, oh, before yeah. before that's they a, evolved it and completed it. Yeah, that's a good trick that we use often. I mean, not e I'm not even talking specifically with Michael, but a lot of times if you're stuck choreographically, you know, switch the song and like start listening to other accents and it'll bring different things out. Then you go back and right. play the original music and it's, it's cool, like you hit unexpected moments that aren't necessarily there in the music. So yeah. we, we use that trick a lot, choreographing to different music. And then- I love that. Like, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. so cool. Yeah. Now, Danny, um, I, have uh, 10, I have 10 minutes. Yes, I, I was cool. just gonna say, I'm noticing we're already over 90 minutes. That's okay, so, I can do 10 more minutes. So let's make sure okay. we get in as much as we can. So there's two things I wanted to ask you. Um, one being um, a kind of personal question, but interesting from a dancer perspective, and also with myself being a Michael Tribute artist, you know, and finding that um, weight is gained easier and is <laughs> is more difficult to lose. As a dancer yourself, how do you manage to maintain your weight? And is it difficult? And is it a battle? Or are you someone that, that didn't really gain weight much anyway, had a fast metabolism? You know, it's a very specific question for each person. Like everyone's body is so, so different. And the beautiful thing is now in these days, more dancers are different sizes. Everyone's not just skinny, which is, is right. great. Now, Michael was always very skinny. And yes. what I thought was interesting about this, if you go to Ghosts and you look at him as the mayor, with, you know, he's got a, a fat suit on. That's what they call right. it. And, you know, he's a white man with, you know, and it's Michael Jackson dancing hard like Michael Jackson. But yeah. does, does it look good? Not really, right? It looks like <laughs> really funny. And that's because size is important for a dancer, but not for every genre. So, you know, Michael was, his frame was very thin. And so the movement was created for, his type of body, I would say. Whereas a lot yeah. of hip hop these days is really designed for a more voluptuous, beefy, right. body. And it almost looks funnier on a skinny person. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so I think size is a really, it's a really relative thing in the dance world. Like it, it does matter. But what I like is that there is a place for all sizes. Sure. It depends, like, you know, most ballerinas are going to be thin, but yeah. most hip hop dancers are going to be a little thicker. Most like there's, there's a place for everybody and a genre for everything. For me personally, I was pretty lucky. I was pretty consistent with my weight, you know, for my, most of my career, I would say now, um, now I'm starting to gain a little bit of weight, but I think it's perfect timing because it plumps out the wrinkles. So <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm still a uh, fairly slender person but um you know i don't worry about it so much i'm not trying to be a supermodel i'm just trying to have a healthy body that works yeah. in seasons. and you know i i think we have to try our hardest to love our bodies the way they are i mean we got to keep them healthy and that is hard work sometimes yeah. but sure yeah, it's so you were never like i have to have a salad today or were you like you know ah screw it i'm gonna have a pizza 
or extra cheese or or you were like mindful i guess during a tour you'd be more mindful about something like that um i would say in general i have pretty good um i i i am not a dieter i do not do well dieting but i'm pretty good at portion control i'd rather eat um, a little bit of grate than a lot of fluff like i'm not going to eat rice cakes and whipped cream not going to do it i'd rather have you know a sliver of chocolate cake you know i yeah because you know what life we need to be happy in our life i i, sure. I don't you know i don't think it makes sense to go through life torturing yourself to look a certain way i'm not mm. saying you shouldn't strive to be healthy i work out six days a week i you know i oh wow in, but i so i'm not saying be lazy but i think know your body know what your healthy body should be like and try to keep it that way the best you can but you know well, stay you know, if i had a pizza one day and i was like yeah you know i better not have a pizza today okay i, no, I wasn't necessarily <laughs> gonna sad, but i was gonna you know i'm i'm mindful of things balance yeah. like things, you know yeah well you put me to shame Six days a week of working out. You put me to absolute shame. I need to take a leaf out of your book. And portion <laughs> control, as my wife will tell you, is something when it comes to food I'm not good at. <laughs> I, have to, I have to practice. I have to practice in it. Yeah, she's saying, you look good, girl. Um, uh, and and just, just before you shoot off, after the whole This Is It project um, had had come to its end, after you guys had kind of done everything with the promo and gone to Japan and done the shows kind of around the world and different performances and TV shows and so on. Um, what was your next project? Where did you go from there? What what did you? Oh, I think our next project, like once, I kind of had one off this, I, I actually kind of put together this, this uh, tribute show in Europe for a couple months that I did. But but then our our next bigger job was with Lady Gaga, which was awesome. We worked. Oh, with, fantastic! Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, we worked with her. It was like a short amount of time. It was kind of a, a weird situation, but we thoroughly enjoyed it. She is amazing and the real deal and fully competent. Couldn't speak higher of her. But we worked with her on the Monster Ball tour. Amazing. We meaning yourself and Travis. And Travis and our, our assistant Tony Testa from This Is It. The who, three of them. Who also a little bit of trivia, who also works on The Greatest Showman. Yeah, right? The Tony movie. Did. I uh, think he did. Shannon did. Shannon from This Is It did. I don't know if Tony did. It, oh, if I think Tony was a, an assistant choreographer. Oh, um, I, I think I'm I I think I'm correct was with, with you, saying that, and 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 I remember, I have to double check, but I I'm like seventy five percent sure, um, because I remember thinking uh, when I saw the opening of the movie, and a couple moves, like there was like the whole cross legged thing with the arm up, and I'm like, that was like a nod to Michael, and then I I, I deliberately waited to look in the credits, and it said Tony Testa. I said, let me IMDb that in case it, you know, there could be two people with the same name. And uh, it came up with, uh, you know, filmography of This Is It as well. So I figured oh, it must be the same guy. Wow. Do must you know, I, I didn't even know that. I didn't even know that. Yeah. yeah. I knew Shannon did. Shannon was one of the dancers from Australia. Shannon. Right, was, right. Like, yeah. Shannon he was, was the one with the, the Superman shirt, wasn't yeah. he? When he, yeah, 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 I remember. <laughs> oh, amazing. Well, Stacey, listen, thank you so much uh, for your time. Thank you for sharing all of your incredible stories and your experiences. We appreciate it massively. You're wonderful. So thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you massively. Uh, thank you. I love talking to you, Danny, and all you guys, all your comments and questions and such nice comments. I really, really appreciate it. It makes us feel loved and and be sure and um, try to catch our web series, Remembering MJ. You can go to any of our link trees on any of our pages, The Real Travis and Stacy, or Stacy Alexis Walker or Travis Payne One. So check that out. And um, we also have some dance classes going on all every month, always a Michael situation. So check it out if you're interested. And thank you again, Danny, and everybody stay safe and happy and healthy. Amazing, and just to say on the, on the just to say on the tail end of that regarding your your project, guys, uh, there is a link to the trailer and to where you can view the the, the, the series um, in the description um, below on this YouTube video. So just to let you know, Stacey, once again, thank you. We love you. Thank love, you. blessings, good health and happiness always. Mwah. Thank you. Bye, guys. <laughs>